Hello again, good to be back with you, and I want to talk to you today about thermodynamic processes. Whoa, that sounds pretty beefy. Well, it is, but it's actually, the, the base idea is pretty simple, and thermodynamic processes are really, really handy, okay? So, the idea of thermodynamics, the big idea behind thermodynamics, is that it's a level of abstraction. That's part of what makes it so difficult to study for a lot of us, for people like me who are really interested in the nuts and bolts of things. Um, imagine, I've got a little toy steam engine here. Put it up close so you guys can see it. This really is a little steam engine, and if I had the heat on, I, I don't right now, I'd be making steam, and this little wheel here, this little flywheel, would be turning, okay? Well, what's going on is heat from the, down here, the little uh, fuel pan there, will heat up water that lives in there, and vent it out through this piston, and make that turn. Now, if I'm not careful, I'm going to get so caught up in, well, how much water is in there, and how big is the piston, and what's the throw of the little crankshaft here, and what's the mass moment inertia of that, and how much pressure is in there, and all that kind of stuff, I start losing the ability to think broadly about steam engines. Okay, this is actually called a Carnot heat engine. That's the, the, the kind of engine this is. And the, the reason we have thermodynamics is to separate us from all those nuts and bolts, all those mechanical details, and think only now about how heat and energy flow through a system. Now, it's an abstraction, but it's a very valuable abstraction. It lets us start looking at classes of engines without having to go into all the, the gritty details of how each one of them works. Okay, so thermodynamic processes are the ones that look at how either uh, energy or mass flows through a system. Okay, Whew. see how abstract that sounds? How energy and mass flow through a system. Okay, mass flows through a system. What if I had a pump that pumped air and, at the t and compressed it at the same time so as it did the air got hot? Well, that's what air compressors do. That's if you look at the air that, that comes out of an air compressor, if it hasn't uh, expanded again, but if it goes into a tank or something, that tank is hot. So air gets compressed and heated up and goes to somewhere else. That's looking at pressure and heat flowing through a system, okay? So you see kind of where we are right now? We're thinking about processes and cycles, thermodynamic cycles. Well, the simplest one I've ever seen, a thermodynamic path, I guess, the simplest one I've ever seen is from a book called Thermodynamics for Dummies. I could never think of a better example than this, so I'll just use theirs and credit it. But let's say I wanted to make a certain quantity of hot water. That's about as simple a process as you could have. And let's say that uh, the volume is here and the temperature is on this axis. Now. See how this is working? I've got volume on this axis, temperature on this axis. Now I'm starting to think about mass flow and heat going through a system, okay? So rather than talk about, well, if I want to make some hot water, rather than saying, well, I've got a uh, water heater and pipes and pumps and valves and faucets and pans and stuff, you know, really hard uh, concrete mechanical stuff. Now I'm just thinking about volume and temperature, same thing different way to think about it. So let's say I have a path here. I'm going to draw it as a, a box. Okay, so there we'll call that empty. And there it's full and it's cold, whatever cold is, and hot, whatever that is. Okay, there we go. I want a, I want a certain volume of hot water. Well, I can start right here and I can end right there. So that's the start, and that's the end. Okay. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't matter when you look at the, the process this way. It doesn't matter what path you take. Okay. The, the obvious path is to fill a pan and then heat the water. We'll just call that path A. Okay. That's one path to get you from the beginning to the end. Well, here's another one heat the water and then put it in the pan. That's B. Right? Now when you talk about heating water and then putting it in the pan, 
well, maybe I have a water heater, maybe I have some pipes, and I, I just heat the, you know, heat the water up and then open some sort of valve or faucet and fill a pan up. Okay, that's this. Here, I'm going to put cold water in a pan and maybe put the pan on the stove and heat, the, heat it up that way. So when you think about it this way, all we know is we started from there and, and ended there. We, we don't really care necessarily what path we take. But if we start talking about the nuts and bolts of how we're going to do this, now we're back in the world of pipes and valves and faucets and heaters and all that stuff. Good stuff, but it gets in the way if you want to think about things in, in this sense. So here's kind of a made-up thing. Like I said, I, I can't think of a better, better simple example than that. Again, uh, thermodynamics for dummies is where I got this. I want to make sure and credit it to the author. Um, let's try something a little more uh, practical, a little less kind of made up. Let's try this. What if I had let's see volume on this axis, kind of like I did before, and pressure on this axis. Okay? And so I want to go from an initial volume VA to a final volume VB, an initial pressure PA and a final pressure PB and that's what it looks like. I'm going to get rid of that right there. Okay, That's a thermodynamic path. This is what they look like. When you look in the books, this is what they look like. Um, so uh, this is an, another example of this sort of abstract way of thinking. Pressure volume. Now I'm not talking about, you know, uh, compressed air cylinders or uh, hydraulic cylinders or pumps or working fluids or any of that real mechanical uh, concrete stuff. I'm still thinking in this abstract way, but this is the power of thermodynamics. Okay, you get to do stuff like this. All right, so there's what we got. Now, how much work is it going to take? How much energy do I have to expend to compress a fluid and change its volume? Well, if I was trying to measure pressures and temperatures of a tank of compressed fluid or something, it gets pretty involved. Here, wow, this is really easy. The area equals the work. Area under this curve equals the work. So that area, that shaded area right there, that equals the I'll get that out of the way. That equals the work. Now see the power of this? See the, when you start drawing things in these more abstract ways. Difficult calculations now become fairly straightforward. Okay, well, let's let's continue this. So the work equals well area under the curve. That sure sounds like calculus, doesn't it? Okay, All right. V A V B pressure D V. That's the expression for the work required to change pressure. Now, is P a constant here? No, that's the whole point. It's not a constant. You have to be able to write P as a function of, of volume, okay? P must be function of volume. Well, how in the world are we going to do that? Well, I don't know. Ideal gas law? Maybe we could start there. See how this works? Now, you could also use temperature on an axis like this. You'll even sometimes see them and there's a third dimension because pressure and volume and temperature are all related to one another. So this is the idea. This is called a thermodynamic path. And the, the big idea is you're trying to look at mass flow and energy flowing through a system. And that system could be a machine, it could be a process, it could be a lot of stuff. But by going to this, this level of abstraction here, away from the hardware, you get to start doing things like this and thinking in very powerful, compact ways. Right? And the thermodynamic path is the picture you can draw to get you there. Typically what you'll do is you'll go around the, the, the boundary of some path okay, on one of these drawings. And anything that stays the same uh, as something happens in your, in your uh, uh, path has the word out of the prefix iso in front of it. So you have isothermic, isobaric isentropic, things like that. And anytime you hear see ISO and then something behind it, it means something is staying the same. Okay? Isobaric, same pressure. Isothermal, same temperature. 
Isentropic, entropy doesn't change. And that just means a line is either horizontal or vertical on one of these paths. That's all it means, okay? So hope this helps. Um, I'll talk to you later, and uh, see you next time.